Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hello all, my name is Sarah Dietschy, Rhymes with Peachy, and today we have the M1 MacBook Pro, but also we're testing out Adobe Premiere because it is officially M1 native. If you're new in this sector of the internet, Apple released their new M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro in November of 2020. Now this means Apple is making their own processor, so they made that move away from Intel. And a lot of the software developers have now been hurrying up to, you know, transform their apps to this new environment. And Premiere definitely lagged severely behind on Resolve, but I'm so excited to now have native support, native M1 Premiere, which is amazing. And because I only wanted Premiere to be open on my computer, I didn't want to be, uh, you know, recording in quick time to bog it down. Uh, I have a second camera and now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, it might be kind of hard to stay out of its way. I might have to, I might have to move it more over the shoulder, but it's going to be in the shot if that's okay with you guys. I try to make it pretty in the background, but I don't know if it's going to work. Okay. I'm just going to launch Premiere. Okay. Okay. So while this is loading, Gonna move this guy. Oh, that's kind of sketchy. The A cam right here, this is the A7S3, which it looks like it's scrubbing through well. Okay, initial impressions, awesome. And then this B cam is the A7 III 8 bit footage, which we expect to, you know, hopefully be really easy to scrub through. Okay, also what's great with Premiere being officially M1 native is I was able to download Film Convert, my color grading app, so that's no longer, that wasn't an option during the beta, so now we officially have, you know, the tool that I used to color grade, which is great. So I'm just gonna start a new timeline, drag that down. I just wanna make sure Film Convert works. Perfect. Okay, so this 4K A7S III footage is in the middle ground when it comes to scrubbing, how hard your computer has to work um, to work with this footage. It is the 4K XAVC HS 10-bit 420, um, and so the hardest would be 10-bit 422. So by lowering that color depth to 420 actually does a lot to help out with the computer. And it looks like Premiere is doing a great job actually scrolling through this footage, which is just fantastic to see. Let's go to the B cam, which is the A7 III. And remind you, this already had film convert on it. So the fact that it's scrubbing so nicely, there was still that delay with pressing start. A little bit, but that's with film convert on it. So yay, awesome. I'm gonna turn it off so it doesn't have to work too hard. I'm gonna bring the B cam down here. I'm not gonna do a multi-cam sequence. We're just gonna cut it like this so you, so you guys can just see what I'm doing. We're going to sync based on audio. This is something that Premiere does so well is just synchronizing footage based on the audio. Um, if you're doing multi-cam stuff. Oh and it said it could not sync. Oh my God, I was just bragging about you. Why? Did, I've never had this fail. All right, let me make sure this footage goes with each other. Yeah, this footage goes with each other and it has audio. Let's check the audio. The laptop is really has decent scratch audio and this is the good audio. Right now, we've always loved their design. Okay, maybe it doesn't like that it's only playing in the right channel. We can fix that. Let's fix that real quick to have all of the updated goodness, the 30 series graphics. The I fixed the audio, it was only coming out of the right channel. <laughs> I'm just starting the video. Okay, this is really weird. I don't understand why I'm having an audio synchronize fail. I do the A cam, B cam setup all the time and this, the, the way Resolve does it is actually really annoying to me. And this is a feature of Premiere I've actually missed because it always does such a good job no matter how crappy the audio is. It's a shame that like the first thing that I went to do, I already <laughs> ran into a problem. Could not synchronize one or more clips in the current selection because a match could not be found. All right, I'm just gonna see if I can manually line them up and then Premiere, fix that please. 
I think I did do a clap. Yeah, here's the clap. Okay. Okay, so I was smart and I did do a clap. So I was able to manually line it up. I've literally never had that issue with Premiere. But, you know, I haven't been editing on the M1 MacBook. Man, just quirks, quirky stuff, you know? Hello, all Sarah DT Ranch. This is here and we have a brand new laptop. So I recently reviewed the M5. Oh gosh. You guys are gonna see how many takes it takes sometimes for a video. <laughs> And if you don't know what I'm doing with my left hand, I'll put my peachy shortcuts for free in the description below. I basically have all of my shortcuts uh, set to the left side of the keyboard. So with my left hand, I can do all the shortcuts and my right hand I can navigate. Um, so you don't have to lift up your hand to do JKL. If you didn't know, um, L moves you forward in the timeline. K stops the timeline. J goes backwards. And I just moved it over to SDF and then three and four is making the timeline a zooming in and out. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. And then Q is ripple edit. That's an awesome shortcut to know. Let's do a cut right there. Oh, whoops, took the audio with it. Let's unlink the footage. Cut to that second angle. Oh, that second angle is blown out. That's why you use zebras. Dang it. An audio transition. So long. Okay, so a very similar box. I already saw that. It's probably, I feel like it's more slim. I wish I brought the M. I wish I brought the D. 50 but we'll compare. I wish I brought the M. Slim. I wish I brought the Z. See, some of my settings haven't saved over. Usually I have that constant power set to only two frames instead of like the really big transition. Yeah, I wish I brought the Z15 with me, but we'll compare those later on in the video. And this footage is editing really, really nicely. Okay. Okay. It's actually way thinner than I thought it was going to be. Like it has a solid amount of weight. Okay. If you saw what I was doing there, I actually do a lot of that. And that's what I really enjoy about Premiere is it's really good when it doesn't crash about being able to edit while it's still playing back footage. So you know, I had that second angle there as it was playing. Than I, thought it was gonna be. Like it I was like, okay, so that's a good angle. So I want to keep pushing this back and I want to scroll on the timeline and keep going like that. And so while it's still playing here, just being able to cut this or maybe adjust the audio at the same time. I do that a lot and Resolve doesn't like that as much as Premiere. This is, this is turning into just another Premiere versus Resolve video. I'm sorry. Did you see how basically I hit my shortcut A for being able to grab all the clips to the right of me and then I can move it wherever I want. Resolve, basically that shortcut just automatically grabs all the clip to the right when I press the shortcut and then I can move accordingly. I don't have to press the shortcut, then click and then move. Uh, Resolve does a good job of kind of like eliminating clicks, which I appreciate. Okay, that's so annoying. Let me change that. Okay, audio transition default duration. Just turn that to two and you will thank me later. Good for YouTube. You can select all your footage, just do that shortcut and it'll take out all of the pops in between A-roll. <laughs> My cat started meowing during this video. That's funny. Okay, so that's a good point to leave off. We have the first three minutes of the video edited here. Okay, so I turned film convert on on that A7S III footage. As you can tell there, there was a little bit of lag playing back the footage. Even when you're scrolling through footage, sometimes you'll notice as you get to editing and cutting and uh, kind of, you know, putting a little bit of stress on the computer, the playing back slows down a little bit. Uh, that's just like normal with some computers I feel like. Um, so I'm just gonna copy and paste this film convert and we're gonna kind of do the same thing. Gonna do a little bit of cutting with the color grade on. Now I would recommend anyone with any computer to just leave the color grading to the end and then you can switch it on and off when you're actually doing the cutting because that just adds stress on the computer that it just doesn't need. Okay. That grade actually looks really nice on both. So you know what we're gonna do? 
we're actually gonna turn it off here and we're just gonna do an adjustment layer over the entire thing. Might as well, cause I wanna make sure I'm using like all of the things, make sure things are working. Adjustment layer. All right. Paste attributes. We're gonna paste film convert. So now that color grade is over all of the clips. So we are at full resolution playback. So let's see how it does. So this is sped up, it's playing through nicely, full resolution. That playback was so smooth. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of Premiere. <laughs> Good job team. No, yeah, this plays great. Okay, so now we're at half resolution with color grading on, 4K footage from the Sony a7S III and a7 III. Yeah, so at half playback resolution, there's like absolutely no pause when I'm pressing play and it playing, which is great to see. Okay, yes, fantastic. Uh, M1 native Premiere has passed just like playing back footage, cutting up footage, now let's export it. Um, yeah, that was super impressive. All right, we're gonna go to H.264 and use the YouTube 4K preset. Uh, Premiere's presets are great for uploading straight to YouTube because then YouTube doesn't have to recompress again. So this file is going to be a gig. We're gonna start the clock. So it's estimating two minutes and 45 seconds, which will be a decent export time. With the Dell XPS 17 in Resolve, I exported a 10 minute video, which was 4K A7S III footage. Um, I exported that in only three minutes and it was a 10 minute 4K video with the same type of footage. But again, guys, that's a 17 inch, pretty thick laptop that has a ton of active cooling. It has the latest and greatest NVIDIA graphics. So I don't necessarily want that to be, you know, the, the direct comparison, but it just gives you some context because I think a lot of people look at this M1 MacBook as the end all be all, just like, oh my God, it's so powerful, which it is. It's powerful for what it is. It's in the MacBook Air and it's in the MacBook Pro 13 inch model. So we will have more powerful processors coming from Apple down the line. This isn't going to be the speediest of the speedy, but um, speediest of the speedy. <laughs> But given the history of Premiere and, you know, it just not being the best with consistency and quirks and crashing, the fact that we went through that footage effortlessly, it did not crash. Obviously, we had those quirks. We had the audio synchronization not working for some reason. If it can export a video in the at least same length of the actual video, so exporting a three minute video in three minutes or less, that's what you want. You know, if this was gonna take over three minutes for a three minute clip, that would be a little bit concerning, but uh, remind you, this has color grade on it, so it's doing the work, it's crunching the numbers. All right, so it exported a three minute and 15 second 4K video with color grade in two minutes and 51 seconds, and you know what? I'm gonna do an export without the color grade, so I just turn that off. We'll do the same thing here and we'll see how long it takes for that. Yeah, so it's estimating a minute and 40 seconds. So we're gonna get a much shorter time when it's just the pure footage. Okay, so that exported in one minute and 42 seconds. Okay, so not the craziest export times that I've seen from Premiere, but the other laptops I'm testing out Premiere on is, you know, like six, eight core i7s, i9s with dedicated NVIDIA GPUs and they can get that CUDA rendering going. Um, so, you know, again, I don't wanna directly compare it to that, but good export time speeds. And let's look at the files. Let's hopefully see that there's no glitches that was weird. The preview lagged a little bit. Okay, no weird coloring or glitches. The exports look good. Okay, epic. You know, this is this is good for me because I feel like I don't have to make any more videos about the M1 in Premiere because I feel like I can kind of say, hey, we've arrived. If you're a Premiere user and you want to pick up the M1 MacBook, you're at a place where the performance is is really really good. There might be some quirks with it that I'm sure Premiere is going to hammer out, but 
you, you guys know my experience with Premiere and other computers. I feel like there's always quirks. <laughs> um, so that's something that no matter what computer you have, you're gonna have to deal with. And I'm gonna throw some A7S 4K 422 10-bit, like the worst footage that you can throw at a computer for editing and see how that does, because it did such a great job with the 10-bit 420. But before that, just a quick word from our sponsor, Squarespace. I love you, Squarespace, so much. If you guys have been keeping up with me, you know I just opened up a photo rental studio in Great Texas right next to DFW Airport and I use Squarespace for the website and it was so easy to make. You can go to bookblanco.com to check out the beautiful Squarespace website or if you need a beautiful big white wall fully lit to shoot your next music video or photo shoot against well you can book there as well. But I made this site purely from one of Squarespace templates. They have so many amazing templates for you to just get your start, insert some pictures, and then they have so many great tools that then talk to other things. Whether you have merch, you wanna run a store, do some e-commerce. How about scheduling? Do you run a hair salon or something like that? We have bookings every single day. So the ability that someone can just go to our website, click the time that they want, and Squarespace automatically sends a confirmation email, sends them the information they need, it makes my life so much easier and everything was there everything that I needed was there already online store capabilities booking services third-party extensions all of the things and once you have that up and running they also help you market your site they help you out with SEO search engine optimization I always get so mesmerized like actually how squarespace.com how their website looks they're just like always updating on the chunky text I feel like they have like a, a refresh website every month every two months respect Squarespace I notice anyways um so hey well if you want to book a studio space in Grapevine Texas and also check out my gorgeous Squarespace site well you can go to bookblanco.com but if you want to build your Squarespace site now is the time get out that project to the world build that business you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to start your website start your business you can go to squarespace.com slash saradici that's me to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. So exciting. Okay, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring. Now let's hop into that A7S 3 422 10-bit footage. First thing I want to do is see if on the M1 version, specifically for Mac, if Premiere solves the problem, when you do a screen recording with QuickTime, can you just save that file and it'll play back in Premiere? Because previously, directly from QuickTime, you would have to export it to either 1080 or the 4K preset. You couldn't just bring it in. So this was my QuickTime recording. I exported it to 4K. So this should work and play back. Premiere is just kind of bad with variable frame rate. So you gotta watch out for that. When you do screen recording, use OBS or something so you can keep it at like a you know 30 frame rate or 60 frames per second. All right, so the one that I exported to 4K does fine. Let's see if it'll take a, a QuickTime screen recording directly from QuickTime. Oh my gosh, oh, okay, well, it's glitching. Did you see that glitch? But it is playing back. Okay, glitchy, but there is playback. So I guess that's progress. <laughs> okay, so this is the fanciest setting on the A7S 3 10-bit 422 XAVC. S and you know what? Let's see. Okay, that's a lot of delay from when I press the space bar to viewing the content at half playback. Let's try one eighth. Let's try to edit it. Okay, so still a little bit of a delay even at 1 8th playback, but this is actually doing um, fine. Like if you need to hop in here with this fancy footage, do a quick edit, you'd be able to do it, but you might have to stick to a proxy workflow or just shoot in 10 bit 420 and you will be, um, you'll still be happy. Just as I was posting this video, someone from Adobe tweeted this which means if you're keeping up with Premiere Pro Beta, you can update it and you're gonna get special hardware acceleration for 422 10-bit. 
Let's see this hardware acceleration and work. We're gonna start off, we're gonna be bold. Let's start off in full. Oh, stuttered. Half. You can see how many times it takes me to do my intro. Okay, it's super instant at half playback, which is good. Still struggles at full, but who needs that? Cut, let's do like a, yeah, nice. Insanely impressive for a very thin 13 inch laptop. Like good job Apple and now Adobe, finally. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It was a little bit more of a chill, fast video. Um, I just wanted to round out my M1 MacBook and Premiere content. I'll link my other videos down in the description below. Good job, Apple. It just, it took a minute for some of the software to catch up, but I think um, a lot of different creators, whether you're a designer, photographer, videographer, you're going to be very pleased with this. Me personally, I'm just gonna wait until all of the quirks are ironed out, which I think will happen in the next year or so. Um, but yay! Let me know if you like this video, hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week and leave me a question down in the comments below if you have any questions with Premiere and the M1 MacBook. I'll try to answer a few of them. Also, something I would like to publicly say, I, I've said this uh, several times in the past, but just because I made one video about, I don't even want to say it so the scammers come out, but bit dash coin. Um, I do have some of those like WhatsApp scam scammers on my channel. So my name, if I comment to you, has a very like highlighted circle around it and it has a check and it's very obvious that it's me. But unfortunately, commenters can still have my name, Sarah Dici, but they don't have that highlight around their name. So pay attention to that because there's some weirdos out there who are trying to give people their WhatsApp number and then people think it's me and then they're scamming you know, innocent peachy fam for, for money and we, we don't want that. Okay, like, sub, and stay peachy. That's really all there is, okay? Okay, bye.